right, boys and girls, this is going to be my rendition of the six cup turner. Seen a few videos on YouTube, but nothing. There's one that was comprehensive enough, but the, the camera work was kind of shoddy. I'm going to try to improve on that. So here's what we got. Try to get you a little bit of a time lapse up there with my super high quality tripod there. So what we're doing here, this guy right here is going to be the base. This is going to be very dependent on the kind of space that you have. The space that I have is exactly four feet wide. This board here is just under four feet wide. Scrap plywood from my wife's desk. Turner's also for my wife. And then we're going to go, uh, looks like about 24 and a half deep. I got 26 inches deep to play with, but like I said, this is a scrap piece. It's not going to go to waste. Then we've got these pieces here. They're going to construct the, the housing for the, um, the Turner motors. So you've got these two identical. They're going to be up like that, one in front of each other, in front of the other. And then this bad boy right here will be the top. He's a little bit thinner. He only needs to be as wide as the light switches need him to be. I'll get, get going on this, measure everything out, bring you guys back when I got something interesting to show you. struggling with some math there in the time lapse not great with math so what I did here we're about three inches from here two and a half from the top gives me some nice spacing so the cup isn't bumping into the wall and whatnot then I went every well I also did the same thing over here to make sure that the spacing was even from side to side from here wow I hope I didn't get you guys all motion sick from doing that then it goes every eight and a quarter inches, eight and a quarter inches, eight and a quarter inches, eight and a quarter inches. This is a wee bit longer. I'm not gonna get super OCD about it. It has to be functional, not beautiful. Um, and now the plan is to take this here hole saw, says two and an eighth on the back of it, 
That may or may not show up. All right, some things worth noting. These holes probably should be two inches, not two and an eighth. Ended up being just a wee bit too big. Still making it work. The screws in there, or it's not going anywhere. So that's gonna be what it is. Like I said, it doesn't have to be beautiful. It just has to be functional. But if you wanna make yours beautiful, two inches is the way to go. Also, actually it didn't end up with too much tear out back here. This first one, lots of tear out. Lots and lots of tear out. To prevent that, what you can do is you grab your scrap piece of junk wood, clamp it to the back, and then screw into it. That'll prevent tear out. Uh, but like I said, this is gonna be the inside. Not gonna see it, don't care. Also, you probably see me fighting with that hole saw a little bit. Um, even pressure is the key on these bad boys. You want even le level pressure. Don't push too hard, it'll get stuck. You saw me get stuck a couple times, don't do that. If you're using, like this is ply. This is three quarter inch kind of junky plywood. If you're using something like you know, lumber grade pine or something like that, It's and you push really hard, uh, you're gonna get smoke and stuff like that, you'll get some burning. Nothing to be worried about, just know that that's gonna happen. Also, if you use lumber grade construction pine, like what most two by fours are made of, or one by fours, uh, you're gonna need to drill pilot holes pilot holes all they are is just little starters you take your drill you drill a little little hole and then you come in with if you have an impact driver awesome if not switch the bit out and then you can drill the screw straight into that pilot hole if you don't it'll split it'll ruin the wood you'll have to start over I don't know of a better way to get these little biscuits out of the uh, out of the hole saw you saw me disassemble it over and over and over again if you've got any tips on that I'll take them. I tried putting a screwdriver in these back holes and it wasn't budging, so I just disassembled, reassembled a few times and it worked out just fine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and screw in all these motors and then we'll move on to the next part of the project. All right, boys and girls, here's the deal. I thought I was gonna need some of these guys. The video I watched, the gentleman needed these, what are they? Nylon spacers, half inch by half inch, inner diameter of about a quarter inch. Uh, he had to drill them out a little bit to make them work as a sleeve over these guys. But mine came with these little brass fittings. Little brass fittings here. So I'm not even going to need that. As long as I hammer them in to this, I don't know, what do you want to call it? A bushing? Might be a bushing, might be a nipple, not sure. Either way, it's three quarter inch with no threads to the half inch outer thread. Works perfect. You just hammer this little guy in there. It's not going anywhere. The little hex head in there keeps it, keeps it right in place. It's solid. Make sure that you hammer this in uh, evenly. You want it flat. You don't want it doing this business because that, that's a problem. You want it to spin evenly. So make sure that's flat. So I'm gonna fabricate some of these guys and then uh, I'll put them, on, put them on the old motors here. I've got some set screws that came with them. Easy peasy, Allen wrenches, good to go. You'll see me do that real quick in the next one and then I'll probably start building the box.